it is a problem in the games industry. How do you fund these really, really expensive games without taking on too much risk? And I don't think anyone's really solved it. And I also don't think that these games should be this expensive. One, two, three, four, five, six. That segment is good. And then there's a bridge here. Let me think about this bridge. Um, this is odd. I don't have any good answers. Especially since, like, the river curves around like that. I think I just... Put a pier there, put a pier there, and that's it. Not sure about this overhanging stuff. Uh, having said all that... I was gonna say, like, the movie industry, especially the, the Marvel films, I'm thinking of Star Trek, I guess. Not Star Trek, Star Wars. The Marvel movies. Like, they've figured out a way to just churn these out fairly consistently and you know make a consistent profit I mean not not that consistent but like you you kind of you don't really lose money on these films but then they they also kind of rehashing the same thing over and over again like it's the same franchise same ideas superheroes Like, I'm just, just thinking to myself, have they solved how to, like, make big budget films profitable? And also stuff that people want to watch? Or is it that they're just cashing in on this IP and they haven't actually solved filmmaking as a whole? But there's a temporary profit opportunity cashing in on this IP. Is there a Marvel fatigue? There kind of is, isn't there? How is this? There's a whole boatload of new Star Wars shows coming out in the next year. We'll see how successful they are when compared to Marvel's. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's 
I mean, there's definitely Star Wars fatigue. There might be Marvel fatigue, right? It's like an, an intellectual property that people have invested enough in that they want to watch a bit more of it, and they're just cashing in on those as reliable money-making things. In a way, they've solved the like the, the how to reliably make profitable movies, but it's not sustainable over a long period of time. It might be like they might be like a decade's worth of movies with each IP, and then people are going to get bored of it. How is this? There's a whole boatload of new Star Wars shows coming out. A whole boatload? <laughs> Isn't there already Star Wars fatigue? We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. I mean, the other part of the equation might be that you take some of those profits and you use it to fund new IPs, which I guess is what they probably do that. To fund new IPs, and those may or may not make money, but the goal is to have, like, once you find an, a new IP that makes money, you then churn out a whole lot of movies for the next 5 to 10 years or so, based on that that IP. How is this? Yes, yeah, six new shows movies were introduced a couple of days ago. <laughs> well, we'll see how well that turns out. <laughs> six. Six at a time. Yeah, but in order for that to be sustainable, you need to invest some of that money into new intellectual property, like inventing new stories, new characters, new settings. And hope that some of those do well enough that you can then repeat the cycle. How is there seven, actually? Well, six or seven doesn't make any difference to me. <laughs> I mean, if Cyberpunk does well, they can make sequels, right? Uh, Skyrim did really well. And that pretty much guarantees that people will buy the next Elder Scrolls game, Elder Scrolls 6. But whether they'll buy 7 depends on how well 6 does, right?
I think Bethesda really understands this. I'm just thinking now, Fallout 4, Fallout 3 is the mainline game, and then Fallout New Vegas is a little bit experimental, but they were like catching in on the on the game engine. And then Fallout 4 is the main game, mainline game, although maybe I didn't... I wonder how well that did. Like, really. A lot of people complain about it. And then Fallout 76 is an experimental version, using more or less the same engine, but they kind of put multiplayer into it. It basically funds the expansion of that game engine into multiplayer, which, I mean, probably needs more work, but they got the chance to experiment. And then Fallout 5, whenever that is. So Bethesda, what I'm saying is, Bethesda is kind of alternating between a safe Fallout and a risky Fallout, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, they make a safe one, and then they make an experimental one, and then they make a safe one, and then they make an experimental one, to try to, like, spread out the risk. They don't do something crazy every time. Oh, I didn't do the bridge. I didn't do the bridge crap. <laughs> Hold on, let me go back. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Should I center it? I don't even know. I wonder why they didn't make an experimental Elder Scrolls. I guess they're gonna they use Fallout for that. It's possible that whatever technologies they developed for Fallout 4, Fallout 76, they will use in Elder Scrolls 6. In which case it will be like one experimental and two safe games instead of one and one. Oops. I didn't break anything, did I? No. Right, so that one, and then... Hmm, 
awkward. Ah, <laughs> uh, maybe I should have done this differently. Alright, I'm gonna move some things. Assassin's Creed. I'm thinking about Assassin's Creed. I haven't played any of the recent games. But one of the things that Assassin's Creed did wrong is they... They did the experimentation on the mainline series. <laughs> Which, if you really think about it, doesn't make any sense. So they would make, like, the main games, they would make a new engine and like put in like new ideas into the main game. And then the cash in game, they would just rehash the same engine and like redo some of the same ideas in, in the in the other one. So like there's Assassin's Creed 2 and then there's Assassin's Creed uh, Brotherhood and then what's the next one? I forgot. So there was Assassin's Creed 2, the main number one, and then there were two others that followed that kind of used the same engine and used the same ideas, expanded it a little bit. And then there was Assassin's Creed 3, uh, but Assassin's Creed 3 was so bad that they didn't make any cash-in ones. And then they went for Assassin's Creed 4, and then they rehashed the same engine and ideas in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and then so on and so on and so on. So. The mistake there is they put all their all their eggs in the experimental basket instead of in the safe basket. <laughs> and so sometimes the experiments would fail and all their eggs would get lost. <laughs> it's just break all their eggs, if that makes sense. When what they really should have done is they should have like made the side games the experimental ones. And then put all their their big money eggs, the, all the gold eggs, in in the safe games. <laughs> like you build a new engine on the for the side games. You don't build a new engine for your main game <laughs> because that's such a huge risk that your engine is not optimized or you like doesn't work properly or you haven't figured it out. Which happened a lot, actually, in the Assassin's Creed series. Is they make a new engine, it doesn't work the way. It doesn't work completely. And then you have all these wacky bugs in their main games! So uh, Ubisoft, I think, didn't have the right business plan. <laughs> For a while. They might have improved now. They might have figured it out by now. But it was definitely true back in the uh, Assassin's Creed 3 era. And by era, I mean there was only that one game. Assassin's Creed 4 basically was what Assassin's Creed 3 was meant to be, but they kind of botched it. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I guess, like, the point is. Oh, that's one off. Why is that one off? Oops. What's going on? Oh, that's why. Like where you, where you do the work and where you make the money are not necessarily the same places, right? 